Hey guys, welcome back to World of Warships. I'm finally getting to it. The Coal Destroyers. The Coal Ship series continues here in 2024. Although we're certainly closer to 2025 now than the beginning of 2024. So these videos, though, will still be relevant in 2025, even though I'll probably update them. Jaeger, though, has been added to the Coal Destroyer roster this update. Very cool to see. The ship was more of an event vehicle but it's available for coal, and it's the cheapest high-tier coal destroyer at 225,000 coal. It's also got a very interesting gimmick in that it has insanely fast reloading torps with very low damage. They also go extremely fast, and you have amazing concealment, allowing us to outspot most other enemy destroyers, and if we have a friendly gunboat DD, like an Akizuki, well, you're just going to win flanks rather easily. These guns really aren't much to write home about, and we're going to see that throughout this video. But these torpedoes are really why you want this ship. And at high tier, at tier 9, you're often going to be getting more credits. So if you're looking for a premium ship to earn you a lot of credits, and you're interested in specifically torp boat DDs, I think Jaeger's a pretty good option for you. There are reasons to skip it though, and it really comes down to the ship not actually having the best torpedo DPM. So we should talk about that. You probably think of this ship as a torp DPM monster. It almost plays like a sub in a lot of ways with the insane reload, but the low damage on these torpedoes. It's not a submarine, but <laughs> some of us have taken to calling it as a submarine because that's how it plays. Never using its guns, really simply staying in concealment and then launching insanely fast torp strikes one after the other. But the torpedo DPM is only 63,812. At tier 9, that means you're one of the worst. You're 24th best at tier 9 out of 30. <laughs> And I know Torpedo DPM is not everything. The ability to reload quickly here allows us to maybe land a lot of floodings. And that's something you want to do here. A lot of your damage will come from floods on battleships. But for comparison, you might be thinking this is a modern version of the Benham, which also has 12 torps that reload in 85 seconds base. Very similar. Little bit less range there and certainly not as fast, but they have so much more damage, and the DPM is 171,000. We can still get dev strikes. <laughs> It'll take nine out of the 12 torpedoes, but we'll take a dev strike on a poor tier seven there. This is arms race though, although we don't have any damage buffs or reload buffs on our ship yet. So that is just the stock torpedo experience. They still can do some very good damage, but Benham having 15,200 alpha damage with its torpedoes, and Jaeger only having 7,533. Pretty massive difference there, considering I have the same number of torps and the same reload. It's the speed though. You're catching people off guard with the speed is the idea here, and landing a lot of floods. I do think Jaeger is quite fun to play. Uh, it's a very relaxing ship to play, since you're not really focused on your main guns. You're gonna notice that even though they're 150 millimeter guns, and they have okay HE Alpha, actually, and they have AP available to them as well. Not really the best accuracy. I'm gonna miss a lot of shots on destroyers, even though I am trying to use these guns to deal with enemy DDs. Trying to get the drop on people. We will clean up a little bit on this Iowa as well, getting us to our second Jersey Swirsky proc. Uh, I'm probably mispronouncing that, but that's our commander right now. If you have the special commander for the European destroyer line, it's going to be excellent here on Jaeger. Anytime you land eight torpedoes, I believe it's eight, you're going to get a nice reload buff to your ship, at least when it comes to the torpedoes. And that is stackable. You don't just get it one time in the game. We got our second proc here this match, and we're going to get close to a 40 second reload on these torpedoes. Really feels like a sub then with that 40 second torp reload, low damage, fast torpedoes. Of course, not homing, they don't have the gimmick of going underwater to be immune to damage. But this ship has a couple things helping it out when it comes to survivability. I think it's very small, this is a very hard ship to hit because it's just tiny in the water, as well as having a heal. 
In this game, again, arms race, we have some buffs on our ship for the HP, but I am using Superintendent and I am using Survivability Expert, boosting our HP and getting us more healing. This is also a nice ship to have an engine boost on to maneuver around the map. I have changed the build up a couple times though, I'll show you those options towards the end of course, but this also works great as a Swift and Silence build too, more focused on staying dark and then maneuvering around the map even quicker. Again, even more Torp hits. That's our third proc of our Torpedo Reload buff. <laughs> Just look at the Torp Reload here. 43 seconds. <laughs> Pretty crazy. That does include two Arms Race stacks of Reload as well. So, certainly buffing our ship up here a little bit. But I do have to show you what this ship is capable of in Arms Race. But I also had some very good matches in Standard Battles. Something that this ship does amazingly well is map control. It's not something you necessarily think about, but when a ship has this level of concealment, the level of control it has over the map is extreme and is oftentimes very frustrating to fight against. I had more than a couple people tell me while I was playing this ship that Jaeger is one of the most frustrating ships for them to fight in the entire game. And I would have to agree, as far as surface ships go, it is certainly up there. What is this Azumo to do? Like, like, what can he do? He can try and run away, but I'm still gonna launch spreads of torps that allow me to land floods. What does he do? He just kind of dies. There's nothing for him to do here against the Jaeger. And that is an element of battleships versus destroyers. Destroyers, especially torp destroyers, really counter battleships. But there's not a lot of downtime here. Against a lot of other destroyers that are very strong with torpedoes, like say the Japanese destroyer line, very long torpedo reload and the torps don't travel as quickly they're spotted from pretty far away so there's opportunities to dodge and if you do eat a torpedo salvo from a japanese destroyer you've taken a lot of damage but you do have the opportunity to turn away get behind cover you know that next torpedo volley isn't coming anytime soon with a jaeger though yeah the next one's right on your doorstep <laughs> here getting a little greedy to contest this cap or get this cap as well as launch another torp spread. But the flooding here combined with our turpits is going to take out the Azumo. Over 200,000 damage with 29 torpedo hits. That might be the most torp hits I've ever had. I'm not sure. There might be a Holland game close to that, but I doubt it. Holland has much higher damage on its torpedoes. So we're likely killing things before we get to that level of torpedo hits. Just insane. And uh, that flooding damage also helped us out quite a bit here. Our Akizuki played extremely well for a slight up tier there. And 40k from our uh, floodings and fires. And then most of it was still the alpha damage. Second game I have for you here is again about map control. I think the torpedoes kind of speak for themselves here. I just want to talk about what this ship brings to the table as far as map control, controlling cap zones, winning your team games. It's not just that Torp DDs are only good at taking out battleships with their torpedoes. They win games based on their spotting. I play extremely aggressive here and unfortunately don't quite get rewarded for it. Um, I'm a little too close to the Schultz. I probably should have just uh, played a little further away. 5.4 kilometer detect is very easy to stay undetected here. Keep them spotted. But notice I have a Venezia behind me. That is one of the best destroyer killer cruisers in the entire game. It can almost one-shot tier 10 destroyers. In fact, some of them, it can. Uh, so I'm a little disappointed that our uh, Ven was missing their shots a little bit here. Uh, certainly the Schultz should have been much, much lower. But that's okay. It's still an opportunity to show you guys what the spotting can do. It just forces this Schultz away, even if we don't end up killing him. He's just forced to play so much further back, and this allows us to take much more space on this flank. It's not always about caps. I mean, look at that dispersion, by the way, just as a real quick sidebar. The dispersion is ridiculous. <laughs> Although with the 150 mil guns, the HE is going to pen 25, allowing us to just barely pen the Schultz armor. Something I talked about yesterday in the Elbing uh, ship request video is that we had 25 millimeter plating and a lot of DDs can't pen that. Jaeger can, although well, it's questionable how useful that is. I'm gonna send my torps here doing something that I almost never do, and that is sending my torps before focusing on my main gun's DPM in a gunfight like this against a enemy destroyer. Typically, you never want to do that. I see destroyers do it all the time. It's a very 
I would say beginner mistake because the Torps are often just going to miss and you'd be much better off by using your guns. Yes, even on Japanese DDs or DDs with less DPM than the enemy, especially if you have teammate support here like I do. Jaeger though is so bad. I mean, look at this. I'm aiming directly at his hull and we miss. <laughs> I'll do it again. <laughs> Yeah, the guns are bad. Even if they hit, they're still not great, but they just don't hit very often. Fortunately, my teammates come in clutch and do finish off the Schultz for us. Notice we're already up to 100, over 100k spotting damage here. I haven't really done much as far as damage, although we're certainly going to do some damage in this game now that the enemy destroyer is down and we have free reign on this flank. Yes, you're going to struggle more in carrier games. Yes, you're going to struggle more against radars. And I have some examples of that as well. But anytime you get a flank like this, Jaeger is just insanely powerful. And that's true of most Torpedo DDs. Anytime you do have this opportunity to just get extremely close within a couple, like one kilometer or less of your spotting range towards enemy ships, it's very easy to land massive torpedo salvos on these guys. So unfortunately, bullying another Azumo. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure if every clip made it into this video, but certainly while I was recording for this uh, ship, there was a lot of Azumos, and they take a lot of torpedo and flood damage. <laughs> I am going to shoot towards this Azumo as if he's going to stop in reverse, and he does here, as well as maybe launch the torpedoes a little far back. So the rest of this salvo was maybe going to hit someone else. You always want to think about that as well. What's going to be behind your target? Maybe have multi-purpose torpedoes, I think that was a that was a flamu saying, I think, and he's totally correct. Certainly a good option to do that and try to guarantee some torpedo hits. I missed this Conqueror one time already because he just turned flat broadside to my teammates. So I'm just going to aim for that. I'm not even going to aim like he's going to turn away. And we're going to hope to land some torpedoes. Importantly, I now have RPF. We can do some RPF torping. And there's going to be some of that a little later. But here, it's going to tell me exactly where the Smolensk is. I'm worried about the Smolensk popping around this corner of this island and spotting me. But do you see that? Just then is when my RPF switched from the Conqueror over to where the Smolensk was. That told me how far or about how far away the Smolensk was. It always shows you who's closest to you, the direction of the person closest to you. So that told me that the Smolensk was, you know, seven and a half, seven point eight 7.8 kilometers away. There's our combat scout achievement. I think you're gonna get a lot of those in a Jaeger. It's very, very good at spotting. And since you're not ever in a smoke, cause you don't have it, and you're typically not shooting your guns, you're going to be getting close to the enemy and trying to torp them out. Not always to get too close though. You gotta worry about radars, of course, and carrier games are harder, but yeah, the, the scouting potential on this ship is absolutely amazing. The AA is junk though as I'm sure you could tell by the very, very low tier looking hull here. <laughs> Certainly looks like a very old ship brought up into tier nine and I believe that is the case. So you're not really doing much for the AA. So if a carrier is in the game, you need to steer near your teammates, stay close to your teammates that have okay AA so that the carrier just can't hover over you, spot you indefinitely for their team to kill you. Notice here, I'm also not using my heal. I'm not in any danger. There's no radars, there's no carrier. So I don't need to use this heal. I'd rather get the DPM from Adrenaline Rush on our torpedo reload. And there it is, another nine hits into a battleship. Uh, doesn't quite kill him though. Fortunately, the flooding does. That's another dev strike. Not something I expected to get in the Jaeger, to be honest with you. A little bit greedy on some of these torp launches for sure but you do get some very narrow spreads, which is cool. And we end up with nearly 220,000 spotting damage. And what's excellent here, not only is that, look at those credits, by the way, 2.2 million credits. That is with blue boosters though. Um, but you still get a lot of credits and we're top score here with only 100K and most of that into battleships. It's because we got rewarded for all that spotting damage. That has been changed a while ago now. But if you're looking at these DDs, you are going to benefit from that change. It's gonna give you much more XP, which leads to much more credits. So this ship is gonna be quite good for that. Even if you're not doing the damage necessarily, the spotting is very important. And that's why I wanted to go over it so much. But those were the two 
mostly full matches that I cut up a little bit of the boring parts. Here though, let's get to some of the clips, the good and certainly some of the bad. That's not all positive here with the Jaeger. But RPF torping, well, you just kind of torp slightly ahead of where the RPF indicator is. And sometimes you land four torps into a Kagero. <laughs> Although four torps required to dev strike a DD with only 13,000 HP, a little concerning. Um, Daring here as well, does avoid the torpedoes, but he's gonna smoke up and I'm not going to shoot. I don't wanna be spotted here to get farmed in from by that Daring in his smoke. If I shoot, it's possible someone is within our detection range and I stay spotted. So I don't wanna do that, I wanna get away and maybe torp his smoke. But the daring pops out and I was expecting him to turn away and get away, uh, to be honest with you. But he's kind of greeting, I guess, to do damage to us. We're very small, so even daring is struggling to do much damage here to our ship. We got a heal, we're turning away, we should be fine. And we have a friendly Napoli that has pushed up with us. So that means this daring is going to go down. So very, very nice there to see. And that's why you need to be around your teammates. I have an example of a flank I was on without teammates and it's a lot harder. And uh, typically you do want to play more like this where you're near enough your teammates that you're doing the spotting, you're doing the scouting for them, getting them damage, getting them easy ways to know what enemy ships are around and they have all the information to play off of that. And in turn, they help you by keeping you alive when a destroyer rushes you. <laughs> uh, I typically won't be trying to go for solo flanks terribly often unless I know no radar, no DDs can come after me because it is very easy to die in this thing to a gunboat destroyer. Now, Iwami is going to take a few torpedoes. I mean, it's not hard to proc this commander buff for this reload time, guys. Certainly not with Jaeger. This is probably the best ship for it, even better than things like Holland. We win this one, I mean, a massive stomp, just to show you how powerful destroyers are in this game. Winning those DD engagements wins games. Now this RPF is focused on the Riga, and then it swaps. It swaps over in front of him. So I know there's a destroyer coming for us. What's the DD on this flank? Well, it's a Marso. <laughs> oh boy, this is terrifying. What do you do here? I have a Satsuma only backing me up. And you never know with Battleship players. Are they going to shoot the DD or not? And honestly, given that the Riga is so broadside, I wouldn't blame him for greeting for the Riga, because taking out the radar cruiser is also helping your destroyer. In this case, though, um, I'm going to get very fortunate, because my torpedoes are actually going to land on the DD. I've shot torps at a bunch of DDs, and they have not landed here. I'm going to get very lucky for him to turn at the worst possible time for him. And my Satsuma shoots the destroyer and absolutely crushes him so only 900 hp surely i can get that and i do instantly thank you satsuma it's gonna compliment as well because that helps us so much that that basically saved me i i, I die there anyways even if he does shoot at the marceau i mean i if i don't land the torps and uh even if he shoots it's still just gonna be lights out for me because my guns are so bad Here's a great example of making multiple mistakes. Number one, there's an island behind me. I'm putting myself in between an island and an enemy ship that is shooting at me, potentially launching torps. I become very predictable in my movements. One, it makes me take more damage from his guns because I'm predictable. And two, it doesn't leave you much room to maneuver for those torps. <laughs> so yes, we are dying to the Yugumo torps. This ship does not have a very good turning circle. It's kind of clumsy, actually. And I guess that makes sense, considering it is kind of an older style hull. But something to be aware of, this ship is long and it can eat torpedoes rather easily. Here is the example of not having too many teammates on your flank. And I had plenty of room, actually, to go up the one line here before this clip, but I stayed a little bit further back towards our half of the map because I knew that if I was on this side of the map, I could always run back to my teammates if needed. Also a carrier in this game, trying to play that safer a little bit. And the Salem here can help us out as well. Our Salem is doing most of the damage into this Fletcher, helping us a lot on this flank. So you have to really recognize the situation you're in. Are there opportunities to flank? And then is it safe? Is it going to be too risky? Here, 
I determine it's safe enough because the Fletcher's on low enough HP. I can flank and still take him out. Even if our main guns are pretty bad, I'm gonna win this fight and also get some very nasty torp angles on the enemy team. We are gonna lose this game though rather badly. <laughs> My flank was just a little bit too slow in this case. So an example where even though you do get on the flank and the dream happens for the Jaeger where you're just able to torp battleships indefinitely, uh, it was a little too slow. And enemy team did a good job of winning the other flank and winning this game. So Jaeger here, has some struggles. It certainly isn't the perfect tier 9 destroyer. If you're at all interested in gunboat destroyers, this is not the ship for you. If you want to play a hybrid DD where you're torping but also able to get into these gunboat fights, this is not the ship for you. And even if you're a torp boat enjoyer, you still are going to struggle in some games. I want to include this one specifically because I do almost nothing this game. I get a little bit of chip damage here and there, but it's really hard to play into a game like this one where there's not a lot of surface ships. It's mostly destroyers and subs and a carrier in this one. So you got to play a little more passive and you're not going to get those opportunities like I've showed off earlier in this video where, I mean, you're just torping battleships from six kilometers away with 90, 95 knot torps that reload in a minute. That's the dream, but it's not always going to happen like that. And there's going to be plenty of games like this. So I want you to be aware of both opportunities let's say it's not always going to work out for you yugamo here is a very small destroyer to shoot at and our guns are a little bit all over the place <laughs> this is actually my first game playing this ship in a while so my aim might be a little bit off as well but it's also the guns they're quite bad and here right at the end of this match surely i can kill this guy right he takes a massive hit 900 hp we're going to get a lot of opportunities. This game's going to last a little bit yet. <laughs> uh, nope. Not getting hits. Nope. Not hitting that time either. <laughs> uh, nope. No hit there either. <laughs> you know what? Uh, our uh, friend John there got a Kraken. I just wanted to give him the Yukimo kill as well. And he actually did get it there for six kills. That's what it was, guys. I was intentionally not hitting him, all right? And honestly, this is a very fun ship to play. Even if I have some issues with the guns, and overall, I'm certainly someone who enjoys the gunplay. Knife fighting DDs is very fun. And I do think that's a crucial part of the map control. You can't really get the spotting advantage like I showed in some of these earlier games without killing the enemy destroyer that spawned on your flank. And Jaeger is not very good at doing that, unless you get the lucky torpedoes, which is possible. Uh, I do think, though, you need to rely on your teammates to help you kill those destroyers with this one. And maybe that's why I gravitate toward more hybrid ships or gunboat DDs, as it allows me to kill that enemy destroyer myself and gain that advantage for my team. The Jaeger is very fun. Uh, it's not very fun to fight against for a battleship, but to play it, it's rather relaxing and enjoyable. Again, that nice detection. We do have a very fast ship, relatively. And if you take things like Swift and Silence, that is going to allow you to move around the map really, really quickly. And that's what this ship wants. So this is a build that I was running towards the end of my time with this ship. But at the beginning, I ran a little bit different. But the idea here is we have the RPF to maybe get those torps off on someone who is uh, early game, not expecting them. And it also allows us to know if someone's flanking around us or charging us like that Marceau was doing in the earlier clip. Swift, obviously, for the speed, concealment, obvious, and uh, then it's just damage upgrades, right? Obviously wanting better torp reload. It's gonna help us because that's basically all of our damage output. The other build I was using did not run RPF or, uh, or Swift and Silence, and I decided to take Superintendent, I took Survivability Expert, and I took Swift Fish. So that made my torps up to 95 knots of speed. It gave me much more HP to work with since 16,000 or near enough 16,000 is not a lot to work with. You have to be quite careful with that, even with the heal. You don't have a smoke to break line of sight, I suppose. And superintendent giving you an extra heal is quite nice for those longer matches where you take some more damage. Do not run a gun build. I didn't try, but don't run a gun build. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even want to try it, guys, because it is so, so, so bad. 
And I think it's pretty obvious here as well to just go for the full torpedo reload on this ship, full concealment, and then I am running propulsion mod as well, since it's a little bit sluggish to get going too. It's, it's not the best ship maneuverability wise. Turning circle is a little big for a ship this size, and without engine boost, um, it's a little slow to accelerate sometimes. So that's gonna be a little bit difficult for dodging torpedoes for this ship. As I showed, eating that torp. At least there's go next these days, allowing me to jump into another match rather quickly. Now these uh, coal destroyers here, you can see Jaeger and 225,000 coal, not too bad. In fact, cheaper than the uh, Z44 even as well. So the cheapest tier nine uh, coal destroyer here and a very interesting one. It offers up a very unique play style which is something I'm often looking for in these coal or premium ships you can earn. And it's gonna earn you a lot of credits. Um, if played well, certainly you have to play well in it, but the changes to spotting mechanics and giving you XP from that, allowing you to get a lot of credits from just spotting, even without doing massive damage, you should still be able to um, get yourself a lot of credits. Back in the day when spotting wasn't as rewarded and it was really mostly around damage and caps, Sometimes the torp boats could feel a little bit weak when it came to uh, farming credits, but not anymore, which is rather nice. So that's about it for the Jaeger today. How is it in 2024, approaching 2025? Well, it's very good, very fun, rather unique playstyle, but not good with main guns. The torps do very low damage. This is not a Benham 2.0. It's a Benham that relies mostly on the floods, not on the alpha damage. And that can be fun as well. It certainly is a very relaxing ship, and I think it's fun to play. I'll have to go over all these coal destroyers at high tier. And then of course, I'm gonna wrap up with a tier list or uh, the order in which I personally would get these ships. Jaeger though, is probably pretty high up there just because it's so unique and a very different fun play style. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. And have a great rest of your day.